So now we're going to go ahead and dive right into this first segment. So Paul George, he has suffered a hyperextended knee. Now he was like, when he was playing defense, he was in a very, very awkward position and he landed rather funny trying to adjust himself on the defense. I wish I could show the picture, but the picture is honestly a little bit weird and I didn't really want to uh, put that on this graphic, but yeah. Paul George is out. I have no idea for how long he's going to be out, but this is, I've been saying this since the jump. I don't know why teams decide to play their starters, especially their starters who have a history of being injured. Like this isn't the first time that Paul George has suffered an injury. And in fact, he suffered numerous injuries over the span of his career. And with his time on the Clippers, a lot of it was cut short due to these injuries. And the same problem happened with Kawhi Leonard. And really, like, you know, I have a problem with load managing, yes. But that is only a problem during the regular season. Like, for the most part, I'm actually, like, I think load managing is a very smart strategy and something that a lot of players should do. It's just when you abuse it is when I have a problem. But doing it in the preseason, I think, is ne- is necessary for a lot of these players and I just don't understand why the 76ers even bothered with playing him in the in the preseason game because look at what happens now look at what happened now you just lost um one of your best players for and the season is about to start like I mean it's obviously not going to start this week or towards the end of this week but it's about to start real soon and the fact that now they're probably not going to enter the season with Paul George it's a little bit concerning now and not to mention the fact that these ankle injuries or these um leg injuries that he tends to suffer it's also rather concerning like you need Paul George healthy and you need Joel Embiid healthy as well so the fact that the um 76ers even wanted to play um Paul George in this game I, I'm just constantly questioning because we know Paul George's injury history. We know he's not the most healthy player. And we also know he's not the youngest player either. He's 34 years old, I believe. And this is just not this is just not ideal. This is really not ideal. Now, the Sixers, they ended up winning comfortably in this game. So I guess, you know, you could take that however you will and take it with a grain of salt. I mean, 76ers, they won comfortably 104 to 89 partly in due to Trey Young and all of his turnovers in the 27 minutes that he played. But aside from that, I mean, you know, this is this is really bad news. And this is going to be the one thing that this game is going to be remembered, the game where Paul George got hurt. And it doesn't matter the results of this game. And, you know, Maxi, he was playing as well. And he played 26 minutes in this game. Stop playing your starters in preseason games, these games don't matter. Like, we we say the, well, not we say, but a lot of the um, the NBA analytics and all of those um, all of those people that make the numbers and whatever you want to call them, it's like, you know, the regular season, at least to them, it doesn't matter all that much. And to some players, the regular season doesn't matter all that much. I don't agree with that because, you know, I think the regular season is like it's more important than a lot of people like to make it out to be. But a preseason that is those are the games that don't really matter as much. Those are the games that don't matter. And because they don't matter, why are you playing your starters? It goes right back to that point. It should not happen like these sort of. These sort of games should not be, these sort of injuries should not happen. There's no reason why Maxi should be playing 26 minutes in a preseason game. Now, 15 minutes, I guess, that makes a little bit more sense. 10 minutes, yes, that makes total sense. And in fact, zero minutes is how I would go with it. If I was a coach or if I was um, in the position that the 76ers are in, Every single starter and important player that the 76ers need is not going to play in this game. Any player that has been on the team last season that was in the rotation, you know, they could get some minutes. But the reality is that the preseason should be a time where you test and see what your roster can do. And I understand, you know, playing the starters for that, but they should not be playing more than more than 10 minutes in my opinion you could put the starters in and see how they mesh for like a good five minutes or maybe even like a good seven minutes and then that's it but 
really it should not be it shouldn't have been this should not have been a problem and it's kind of ironic how i talked about paul george yesterday and i was saying that him and joel Embiid are going to be under the most pressure for this season because they have everything lined up for them to win now what they need to do is not only do it but also get past the bugaboo of staying healthy joel Embiid has not played a um in the playoffs healthy at all in his career aside from that one four game series in the bubble where he got swept by the Boston Celtics and again this is just a this is just a thing this is just a problem with the 76ers and their injuries specifically with Joel Embiid and now a player that they just acquired in free agency that's getting paid a boatload of cash just got injured and this just doesn't help the team at all now i understand you know it's early in the pre- it's in the preseason and Chances are they're going to have Paul George back in, <clears throat> excuse me, in the regular season, and they're going to have him back for enough games to continue playing in the regular season. So that's that's not really the concern. But the concern that I have is just being able to stay healthy throughout the rest of the season because we already saw that you know he got hurt in a preseason game so what's going to happen in the regular season how do we know he's not going to get hurt then how do we know that he's going to be able to maintain his health throughout the the long post the not postseason throughout the long regular season that these guys have not to mention the play-in tournament adding a couple of games to that as well so it doesn't really look it doesn't really look good for um for Paul George and it's just not a good look at all especially like you know considering his injury history and how often he's been injured in crucial moments and it's really just like it's bad it's just not ideal and not a good way to cap off the preseason if you are a Sixers fan granted you know you still have a rather solid roster having Joel Embiid and having Tyrese Maxey in the lineup as well as well as some of the other role players that the team um, has you know Eric Gordon he can go on a bit of a run sometimes maybe he's a he's a little bit old for that but however you know he can go on a run I've seen him drop a surprise 50 points before and nobody expected that and they have several other players off the bench again they have a very solid team it's just now they got to stay healthy and they got to win it all like this is the make or break in my opinion and it's really like I get it, trust the process, so like maybe I am overthinking it a little bit, but again, this process has been going on since Joel Embiid was drafted, which was, I believe, since 2017, or maybe even earlier than that, 2016. He did get, he was injured for um, the first year, of course he was injured for the first year, and he could, did not, he was unable to play in that first year of his rookie year. But this is sort of just the same thing. And this was a problem with Paul George on the Clippers. This was a problem with Paul George on Indiana when and, and his first stint with Team USA as well when he did suffer that horrible leg injury. Oh my Lord, that was just... Looking at that injury just gives me chills. And thinking of that injury just gives me chills now that I'm thinking about it. It's really... It was a tough way to go down, but his legs aren't really the best, and he's only getting older. So I feel like this is a this could be a problem that doesn't. It's not a problem now, but it could stem into a bigger problem as the regular season continues. So those are my main concerns with this injury. Um, in in overall, um, in conclusion, I guess you could say. So. That's all that I have for the first segment. Again, prayers up for Paul George. Hopefully he can recover um, pretty quickly for the 76ers. Otherwise, the city might go down in flames. <laughs> but aside from that, we're going to go ahead and go into the second segment. And we'll talk about why De'Aaron Fox did not accept a $165 million contract extension that was offered to him by the Kings and what that could mean for the Kings going into the future. So I'll be right back after the short break. Be sure to stay tuned. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. 
want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Getting my way in to be put down. It ain't your place. All this my sound. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it, the noose if it's some loose shit, a stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip, you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind?